Okay, so uh, getting back to this to this climbing rose, this is an Eden uh, climbing rose for the project that I have in mind for the rose. It's called pillaring. So that means all these canes, these long canes, are going to go on that pillar, on that column, um, for the trellis, for the pergola, and um, there's a lot of uh, pruning that I have to do in the bottom because we have to clear this so it doesn't get all the rust all the rust and, and the black spots that may develop um, when you have a lot of humidity and moisture down below that's what happens all right. I'm right here down on the base of this rose and our goal today is to start trimming and pruning so we can provide air circulation down below and preventing this rose um, from su suffering from moisture and potential disease caused by being to choke down down here so what I'm doing is I'm just removing all these little branches we don't need them because we don't want any more growth coming uh, coming out from the major cane so really we're stripping the bottom of the rows of any foliage and allowing it to have all the circulation it purposefully removing all of these branches this branch is another cane that I don't know yet whether I will save this or not but let me tell you there's this one long cane that I will sacrifice and that's the one that is about to grow this way I don't need that um, I have more than enough canes over here to supply me with growth coming up and anything that crosses any branch that crosses or touches another branch I'm removing like this one long cane. In my experience growing and keeping roses here in the south it really isn't that much work. One just needs to have a routine in making sure that proper maintenance happens in the spring like pruning. In the summer they require a lot of water because you don't want them to dry out. In the fall you just want to make sure that throughout the summer and throughout the humidity that happens that nothing gets infected you prune again, remove any dead material, remove any sickly material so that the other healthy tissues of the rose are not sacrificed. This Eden rose with its intense vanilla and spicy scent is good for this part of the garden because we also have a sitting area right next to it. Over the years, as we study different plants that are suited to North Carolina, there are certain roses that are English style and cabbage-like when they bloom that are not suited for this climate. So luckily we have a grower that does adapted roses that will grow well in the North Carolina hot weather. And here it is, after 20 minutes of wrestling with the base of this rose, we can now see how well exposed the crown is. There's not much crossing branches, the leaves have been taken down. And so proper circulation will happen here and there's not going to be too much moisture that could cause any diseases to happen. And another major advantage to correct pruning is the energy of the plant will now go into growing more length, to growing more canes, and that's really the goal that I have so that we could get more of these major canes to go right above the pergola. And as they horizontally grow above the pergola, more blooms will now be produced. We will fertilize the base of this rose and that's where the effect of what we want will happen. This Eden rose has a big base that I need to work in. So after working on the one side, I went over to the opposite side of the base and started pruning away. Right. Every once in a while, I will come into accidents like this where a major branch can really break off. And so what I'm going to do is just tape this off. I'm going to be very careful and gentle with it so it can grow again because uh, I don't want to waste that cane. Uh, that cane right now is what I want to use as the lead uh, going over this part of the pergola. So let me show you how to do that. another piece of tape to make it more secure but in my lifetime as a gardener I broken many a branch and I use this technique a lot and I have a hundred percent success rate in rehabbing and allowing them not to not to die off so 
that is the lead cane that I want to use. That lead tip is what we were going to form. We're going to allow it to grow about 12 more inches longer from the top and uh, will be our lead for the top of this pergola. All right, so there's the lead cane that I fixed and here's the other one that I will try to coax up and over. Uh, you can really see the plane of the pergola as to where I want it to grow toward, um, toward the street, um, to that part of the garden. All right, so here's the remedy that I will do for um, this major cane. What I'm gonna do is get rid of this cane and this cane. There's a lead wire over here. But if I secure this branch on the lead wire, this, all the lateral canes I will keep intact for a couple of weeks and we'll see where it goes. A couple more ties down there and way up over here fall now so I wanted to show you and give you an update on what I've done for the last 45 minutes or so you can really see a big difference in the way we have pruned and trimmed everything that's creating a mini jungle down on the base of this plant uh, now we can see clearly the structure and the skeleton of the rose and all the other canes that we are bringing up uh, we can now clearly see how we can train them to go up and separate from each other I have taken out the majority if not all of the leaves down below and so now this will continue to remain uh, being a healthy plant but I'm very happy with the result and I even was able to see a new uh, major cane that just grew that just sprang from that little branch if you follow it all the way up this is that new cane that we are now going to turn into another main cane um, hopefully for this season if not for next season and really guide that branch to go all the way up. I like this view of when it goes up and then you can see the plane, the top, the top of uh, the pergola. So that's the vision and the plan that I had in the winter. After several months, it's now coming to close fruition. So I'm very happy with this. And there you have it guys, another do it yourself instructional how-to video on how to pillar a rose that is guiding the major canes of the rose to go on a vertical to turn up the volume on bloom time. As always, I appreciate you spending time with me and checking out what's going on in our garden and property. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This is Louie, and we'll see you back here in Acorn Hill. Bye-bye.